geographical coordinate 5 degrees 14 minutes 23 seconds north. 0 degrees 13 minutes 50 seconds west. Kwabenya in the Gan East municipality, covering a footprint of 8,000 square meters, equivalent to one football pitch. 500 skilled and unskilled work hands and 36 professionals. Working 24 hours per day, seven days per week. Covering 91 days. That is 2,184 hours. Operating a robust control framework. And very transparent procurement systems. With $5.5 million in cash and $2 million in kind. Making a total project cost of $7.5 million. Civilians and the military working together for the people of Ghana. We present to you the Ghana Infectious Disease Center. This infectious disease center is designed as four linear blocks, three for patient care, including an intensive care unit, and one for staff, with intersecting corridors and three green courtyards. We also have two ancillary buildings, one for medical gas and the other for power. The building is made of structurally insulated concrete walls and roofing systems. It has a two and a half hours of fire resistance. This building actually has a service life of 50 to 75 years and provides an earthquake resistance of 0.25 G ground acceleration. The GIDC building has generous windows, skylights and three courtyards. This together with the specifications make it energy saving. It saves 22% in energy consumption, 28% in water, and all together, the GIDC is a green building. One of the good things about this project is the fact that we've been able to put together a facilities management and maintenance manual. This manual is supposed to help us to ensure that the property is well run, the maintenance protocols are fully observed, and the property does not run down. This is the pre-charge area. When patients come in, certain basic demographic details are taken of the patient, and when necessary, vital statistics are also taken. Now, for patients who are suspected to have COVID or any infectious disease condition, they are sent to the holding area on this side, where they are detained and further confirmatory tests are done. Once confirmed to have these conditions, they are moved to the triage area. Now, in the triage area, more details are taken of the patient, basic laboratory investigations are done, and the patient is charged based on the disease severity to determine which ward they will be moved to. Therefore, the patient will then be moved to the ward. All diseases that cause pandemics, epidemics, will be detected within this laboratory. Any patient who is being kept here, all ailments from their chemistries to their cell analysis, as well as urine analysis, any medical laboratory analysis that needs to be done for such patients will be carried out within this laboratory space. The laboratory aims at attaining ISO 15189 within the shortest possible time. We will start with ISO 9001 so that documentation is proper and then we move to ISO 15189 that shows the technical competence of staff, people, protocols in the laboratory. Our aim is to ensure that the equipment bring the results as reflective of what is in the patient. We have various configuration of wards within this facility depending on the viral load or severity of the patient's case. Over here is the six bed general ward and is for mild and asymptomatic patients. Each bed is equipped with the appropriate medical equipment and accessories. We also have the ceiling mounted curtains which takes care of individual privacy. For our walls, we have used antimicrobial paints which prevents or stops the growth of microbes within the space. Welcome to the nerve center for Ghana's first infectious diseases center. This centralized nursing station is the main point of control for all critical processes within this facility, including our air handling units and our patient monitoring systems for our 100 beds within this facility. The nursing station is also designed to be that main point of control for our dirty utility as well as our sterilization rooms, being the autoclave and the sluice rooms. 
At the GIDC, we have a facility that has a maximum demand power of 660 kilowatts. We have a genset of capacity 880 kilowatts, which is able to serve the entire facility. We have about a 30% loading on the genset, running up to about 50%. We have also installed circuits, which total about 400 in the building, serving lighting, air conditioning, water heaters, and then several others. We have a fire detection and alarm system, which is analog addressable so that you can trace every fire incident to the particular location. We have a wireless access protocol system installed, which is able to give data access to doctors and nurses so that they don't even have to go into the wards. They can access whatever information from all the patient monitors at any location within the facility. The air conditioning process attempts to decontaminate the place to ensure that the air is in a state of cleanliness. There's the process of first reducing the temperature to a comfort temperature level, and then there's another process of taking away the high humidity out of the place. The process of decontamination is done by the UV light. The air conditioning system ensures that the air is safe for the patients. In order to achieve that, the air that travels through the ductwork and through the flexible duct will be distributed by the air diffusion equipment. And as they distribute in, they receive the chilled, fresh air from the air condition. The air shouldn't be stagnant. The air must move. And it's moved through the return air system, through an extraction fan. The gadget there with this pitot tube will ensure that this place, the corridor, is constantly positive and the world is constantly negative, making all the nurses, hospital staffs safe. This facility has 27 WCs, 25 showers, and 65 wash hand basins. All of these are interconnected with 1,000 meters of drainage pipe and 2,500 meters of water supply pipes. And that is enough to go around the football field 10 times. We are in the critical care section of the Ghana Infectious Disease Centre where severely ill patients are going to be taken care of. It is a 21-bed facility which uh, is actually one of the high-performance areas of the hospital. It comprises 16 beds of high dependency as well as 5-bed intensive care units. The facility is equipped with a basket of medical devices comprising intensive care beds, multi-parameter patient monitors, ICU ventilators, infusion devices, nebulizers, as well as wall-mounted service columns through which medical gases, suction, as well as power are delivered. The intensive care unit and then the high dependency areas are linked together by a central monitoring station where clinicians are able to keep their eyes on every single patient that is on admission here without being physically present in the patient care areas. So essentially, the setup is able to allow clinicians who will be working here to deliver world-class medical services to COVID-19 patients, especially the most critically ill. This is the block solely dedicated to the medical staff and their operations. Within this block, we have four offices that are going to be used by the health personnel for their office and clerical activities. We also have two conference rooms for case presentations, for training, for teaching, and then the board or management can also use this same conference room for their meetings. We also have a locker room and some rest areas where staff can actually change from their routine where as and when they get into their facility, into their hospital scraps. 
We also have a blood bank here that will see to the needs of the facility. We have a pharmacy and some washrooms as well, all to cater for the needs of the health staff. We also have a kitchenette and what we have termed the JNPC staff lounge. These areas are supposed to take care of the staff as and when they want to do a bit of relaxation or need to have some medical discussions on patients in a serene environment. As a nurse, before you take care of infectious diseases, you are supposed to put in certain measures in place before you start. One of the key things you're supposed to do is to make sure that your donor instructor is available and all the appropriate personal protective equipment are arranged well and they are available. All the people who are supposed to assist you, being the hygienist who will help you to disinfect very well, also take their role at the dolphin area. And then you have your dolphin instructor who also helps you out to remove your um, PPE, the, that is the personal protective equipment. Once all these people take their position, then you as the caregiver enter the donny room, perform hand hygiene, and then you put on your appropriate personal protective equipment. At the donny area, it's a clean area. So once you enter the donny area, everything you do is clean until you move out from the donny area and you enter the patient area. It is a one way in. From the donny area is clean until you enter the patient's area, it's a dirty area, till you get to the dolphin area. So once you are in the donny area, it is a one way in. You are not supposed to be moving to and fro from the ward and enter. Once you enter, that is it. So before you do all these things, you perform your hand hygiene, you put on your appropriate PPEs, and then you go to the patient room, perform your tax, and then you go to the dolphin area, take off your PPE, wash your hands. If possible and you are very wet, you can take off your scrubs, take a bath, put on another scrub, and then you join your colleagues at the working station. So the patient, having been discharged from this facility, comes through this well-lit corridor, rightly christened Victory Isle, bounded on my right by a courtyard, and on my left-hand side by a boundless space. Philosophy, you've come to receive medical care. You are now ready to join and enjoy family and friends. So the discharged patient, having come to the Victory Isle, comes to the J. Yangtze dispensary, where they receive their final prescribed medication before leaving the facility. Here we are at this all-important room where the discharged patients go through their final decontamination before exiting the facility. Anticipating their exit from this facility, the patient now comes to the OB Aqua Lounge where friends and family will be waiting to graciously receive them back home. Let us believe in ourselves. Invest right in our own people. Avail more opportunities to our professionals and as Ghanaians aspire to excel beyond the limitations of our environment. Today, I am proud to say we believed, we moved, and yes, we made it.